Hello and welcome back to the history of Cornish tin mines and episode 2 of the Rays. Today we'll be charging the Rays round with 70 sticks of explosives using non-electrical debts and one single electric debt to set off the charge. So now I'll hand you over to Mark whilst I assist him in charging the round. So as you can see we've um, sprayed up the holes so you can actually, for the purpose of filming, know exactly what holes we're going to blast. And you can see the cut quite clearly, and you've got the load quite clearly, which is standard of the rays. This rays is being put up on the dip of the load, rather than on the strike of the load, so it'll follow the, ray, uh, the load as it's going, and we'll know what angle it's dipping at, uh, and how consistent it is. Further down it dips at 40 degrees, and we're now dipping at about 60 degrees, so uh, it's steepened up a bit. Right. I'm now going to charge up the raise round and uh, the depth box is down with you Gary. And yep. I've got the explosives up here and the dynamite. And the first depth is going to be a zero depth. If you can pass me the pricker. Yep. This is okay. the Going first pricker. Yeah, for the camera pricker, so that's aluminium. This is what we make a hole in the dynamite with uh, to put the detonator in. Pricker, stick of dynamite. Put a hole in without pushing the, the pricker into your hand, which I've seen done before by students. And if you pass me the detonator, zero depth. Zero depth, this is a non L depth, non electric. We've got a bit of water driven here, so it's always useful to use a non L depth. Detonator goes in, nice and tight, and then you use a charging stick, which is made of wood, and this is pushes the dynamite into the hole. Get up here. You can fire this hole here. And zero. Try one stick at the top and make sure that's sticky. Okay, top of the hole. And what you do with the second stick, when it goes in, the iron might push there and then you have to tamp it. You don't do it with the first stick, the iron that's got the death in it. Tamp it holds the dynamite up the hole, seals the hole, a little better. Yeah, one more stick. Okay, that's five sticks in that hole. Hole's 1.2 meters deep. Okay, the next step now, please. Number one. One that later. Let's put this to the final. Right, the next hole. So what will happen now, this hole will be the first one blasted. It will crack through into that hole there. Creates a bigger void space. This hole's been ringed out, it's made it bigger. The next hole to blast, once that's gone, we'll actually blast that hole there. and that one that cuts a slot across there these holes aren't blasted this hole here will fracture into those two holes okay 
you have like a little letter box then and then these holes here will then be fired you actually that's a slot that will fire in and you actually have a square which is your main shape of your your legs same length as a stick of dynamite, it reduces your amount of dynamite that you use but also you didn't want the cut being fired uh, too hard so the grain would freeze. You can't use spacers for this because there isn't enough power in it so you actually have to fill the hole right up. The ACs would stick it keeper as well. Yeah. And when you had to pay for your dynamite as well, yeah. you did it crofty. Cut down as much as you can. You cut down as much as you can. Unless you were going for volumes of grain when you were soaping, you got you filled the holes right up and put as much burden as you could on it. But when you're doing cuts and blasting out spaces like this, you actually don't want the grain freezing. To have it freeze, it goes off really fast, goes to the powder and goes to solid rock again. And that's uh, not very desirable. Here marks using clay stemming to contain the blast. Wrap it around 
and then we'll tape it, wrap through the tape, this will set off all the shock tube and then we'll tape it an electric bat onto it. This is an explosive charge and this will explode setting the, the shock wave right up through all these non L cords here. And uh, all the holes charged up now with all the uh, non hole depths coming out of them. It is a zero depth, so instantaneous. I'm just taking on to the shop and the deck cord. Oh, mate! that back to the firing cable and we'll wrap around there and then we we'll take the uh, firing cable and we'll keep it up in the air the cops don't let you do it next no it's, um, using your teeth I don't know using your teeth using your teeth this um, detonator you need to have a connection to the wires so what that's crofty no, wires already there already good teeth <laughs> Fight it, you've got a nice clean wire there for your connection. Well, he's the same. He's cool. Yeah. Gus, Gus doesn't like me doing that because he needs, he's got nice teeth, Gus. Uh, I've got nice teeth. And then what we'll do, we connect on. We've got a copper wire in this. And we're firing a cable here. That's connected. What you must check, and you have to do it when you use electric jets as well. So these don't touch because you get a short circuit. So what I'll do here, just twist that there, that's out the way, and that there. And we know full well that those two ends aren't going to touch and we get a short circuit. Just keep this up out the way. And we'll put the string there. And then we'll leave the firing cable out. I now set my GoPro up in a close but safe place to record the explosion and then retreat with the detonator box. Then for safety we close off this section of the mine with a no road sign and retreat back to the firing point. This is what mining is all about and this is the first time I've been present at an explosion since I last worked underground in 1993. Fingers in your ears time. I placed my sound recorder by the no road and this is what it sounds like here. Now we'll watch the explosion through my GoPro.
The GoPro's placed at about 7 meters from the explosion and for the first run through we'll see it at normal speed. The GoPro is actually filming this explosion at 120 frames per second. So for the second clip I'm going to slow the film down to 10%. You can see one piece of rock narrowly missed the camera and clearly see the detonator explode. When the explosive gases have disappeared, we head back into the rays to retrieve my camera and to check the round to see what's happened. The dirt or rubble has to be washed down first, as the dust from this is very dangerous and could cause silicosis. In the old days many miners died of this, as they didn't know the dust was causing the problem. After Mark's washed down I take a look at the rays, and the rounds come out clean. Well that's it for the series on the rays. Special thanks to Mark and Gus and CSM for making this possible. And thank you all for watching and hope you can join me again soon for another one of my videos.